As I always say, a brand is the most valuable, intangible asset of a company and not only influences a product or service price, but also generates high loyalty from consumers. In this video, you will learn how to leverage strategic brand management to acquire high-end consumers. And at the end, you will be capable of building no. your strong no. and unique No! Strategy. No! I thought I was shooting a video with a tank top. Welcome to my seventh digital marketing lesson and today we will talk about brand identity. We'll determine the importance to build a strong brand and we will see the differences between brand identity and brand equity. Afterwards, I will show you how to build a brand by using the Kepfer's brand identity prism and brand archetypes. Since a brand influences a consumer's preferences and loyalty, every company should design its image in a way that can influence consumers' purchasing decisions. When consumers are willing to buy multiple times the same product or service, probably it means that they fell in love with their favorite brand. And these allow companies to predict the demand and secure the market with higher buyers to entry. Because it's always difficult to enter a market controlled by already established brands. And virtually everything can be branded. A physical product, a person, a store, a service, a place, an organization and even an idea. The American Marketing Association defines a brand as a name term, sign, symbol, design or a combination of them intended to identify the goods or services of one seller or group of sellers and to differentiate them from those of competitors. But for me the brand will always be the promise, what a company must be and do for its customers. I can say that a brand is formed by two elements, brand identity and brand equity. Brand identity is made out of a consumer's perception on products and services and it actually helps generate sales. Instead, the brand equity is the commercial value of the brand itself. In other words, it represents the monetary value of the perception of the consumers re regarding the brand itself rather than the actual value of the product or service sold. And brand equity is strictly related to the target audience. That's why it can be positive or negative. You have a positive customer-based brand equity when your target audience responds favorably to a product or service and its marketing. Of course, in an opposite scenario, you will have a negative customer-based brand equity. Marketing management of Kotler & Keller has identified three criteria that define the customer-based brand equity. The first one is that brand equity is built by differences in consumer response. It means that if they equally react to a product or service, it is a commodity and the competition we will be based on price. The second criterion is that these differences are founded on consumers' brand knowledge, their opinion, experiences, emotions, beliefs related to that brand. For instance, when you think of FedEx, it pops the word speed, or formal chimp fun, Nike motivation, Amazon convenience and so on. The third criterion is that brand is a crossover element in marketing. The greater its power is, the more revenues it leads. To explain this point, I want to use a quote from Jonah Satch, an American storyteller, designer, author and entrepreneur who has condensed this concept in few words. Your brand is a story unfolding across all customer touch points. It means that every time an employee has to speak with a customer, that is a touch point. When an user visits your website, that is another touch point. When you send an email to a client, that is a different touch point. Do you understand? Now that you know the difference between brand identity and brand equity, you want to measure it. Because if you are not able to measure the value of your brand, every effort is useless. Keeping track of the value of brand equity is not a perfect science and there are very methods to do so. When I read Marketing and Management of Kotler & Keller, I really like the brand asset valuator developed by the advertising agency 
Young and Rubicam. It is a research-based model which compares the brand equity of thousands and thousands of companies with as many categories of product and service in different sectors. According to the Brand Asset Valuator, brand equity can be calculated with four factors. Energized differentiation that considers how different a company is perceived by consumers, its capability to move forward in the market and leadership. The second is relevance, which tracks the degree of suitability and brand attractiveness. In other words, it represents its quality and loyalty level. The last one is knowledge, which keeps track of consumer's awareness and familiarity with a brand. So as you can see from this image, energized differentiation and relevance are a future projection of a company's growth and value. Together, they represent a brand strength. Instead, esteem and knowledge indicate the past performance and the present value, and together they represent a brand stature. So according to this scheme, strong new brands have a higher level of energized differentiation. Industry leaders are great on all four dimensions. Instead, declining brands have a higher knowledge proof of past performance. And this is just one method to know the value of your brand equity. But usually, if you want to know how much money your brand is worth, you hire a specialized agency. So now let's focus on the sweet spot of this video, how to build a strong brand. The first tool that I want to present to you is Capfer's Brand Identity Prism. This asset allows you also to communicate brand elements in a way that you become memorable and recognizable among the competition. In 1886, the professor Jean-Noël Kapferer developed a six-sided prism to define brand identity and align marketing communication and message accordingly. Later on, in 1992, in his work Brand Management, he also stated, strong brands are capable of weaving all aspects of the prism into an effective whole in order to create a concise, clear and appealing brand identity. As you can see from this image, to build a strong brand identity, you need to disclose six factors, physical facet or physique, personality, culture or values, relationship, reflected consumer or reflection, and self-image. Capfer's brand identity prism considers a brand like a person because the only way to sync with consumers' minds is communicated with them as peers. And like a person, a brand should receive and send messages. So if you take a look at the two strips at the top and the bottom of the scheme, you will see the constructor source, or also called the picture of sender, which comprehends physical facet and personality. It includes the communicative traits of a brand. That's why picture of sender or constructed source. At the bottom, you can see the constructor receiver or picture of receiver. It includes the reflected consumer and self image and describes a brand in terms of the stereotype user, what nowadays digital marketers call buyer persona. And if you are interested in what a buyer persona is, I linked in the description below the article where I explain its definition and how you can use HubSpot for free to create buyer personas. The second dimension of the prism is represented by externalization versus internalization. The first represents the social aspects that a brand should be capable of externalize. Instead, the second defines the internal characteristics of the brand. In fact, it is uh, personality, culture and self-image. If you are confused, don't worry, I'm gonna explain you each part one by one. The physical facet represents all the physical characteristics that a consumer recall when a brand is mentioned. What does the brand actually look like? How can it be recognized? All these elements can be the logo, packaging, geometrical lines, odors, shapes, colors, partners and many others. For example, the physical facet of Apple is the apple with the, the bite, the color white, the color gray, smooth shapes. So here are the elements of physical facet. Personality. Personality because the brand becomes a character with its unique traits and characteristics. It determines the perception of communicating with an actual person instead than an abstract entity. And you can make the personality of a brand with a specific tone of voice or writing style or design. Culture, a system of values guides employees and partners 
through all the consumer's touch points. And most important, it results in a coordinated internal and external communication. So what are the beliefs on which a brand is founded? Their relationship is the degree of attention or commitment that a brand gives to its customers. How does it treat them? How does it help them in terms of customer service? Is the brand close to its customers or it wants to maintain a certain distance? And this element is very important for services than products because a service is a relationship by definition. Reflected consumer describes the characteristics of the target audience. It is the typical user or, as I mentioned before, the buyer persona. Nevertheless, Kaffer suggests a slightly different interpretation interpretation. He says that the reflected consumer shouldn't necessarily reflect the actual target audience, but it should portray a stereotype that makes a group of consumers feel attracted. Finally, self-image is how consumers see themselves in the brand or while they are using the brand. How do they feel while experimenting the product or service? Where are they and in which occasion are they using the brand? For instance, some studies reveal that Lacoste customers see themselves members of a sports club, even if they don't practice sport at all. I've also made for you some Capferer's brand identity prism examples. If you want them, you can click on the related article blog post that I linked in the description below. The scope of this prism is broader than what you can imagine. The first purpose is obviously pave the way for brand identity. But you can also use this prism to audit it. What if the perception of your consumers doesn't match what you have written in the prism? After building a brand identity, a business should always validate it and verify that the message corresponds to the actual perception of consumers. You can use Capferer's brand identity prism to survey groups of consumers and get intel on their perception. For example, you can launch a poll and to understand the physical facet, you can ask, if I mention this brand, what does it pop in your mind? To understand the relationship, you can ask, how is this brand related to you? What's its role in your life? How do you feel when you enter our stores? Instead, regarding the reflected consumer, you can make the standard questions. How old are you? What's your job? How do you spend your free time? So all the questions necessary to identify a specific target of consumers. And I have already published a video on market segmentation. So if you go to my channel, you can search for it and you can see exactly the questions that you have to ask to your audience to understand who they are. And what about personality? For example, you can allow your customers to read a piece of your content from your blog or from your website and guess the personality of the character. If this character were real, how would it be? Culture, are the brand's values this close enough? Can you list them? Self-image, if this brand were a person, how would you describe it? To help you build your brand identity, I've prepared a template of Capferer's brand identity prism that, that you can get through the link that I have inserted in the description below. Ah, one is done. Now, archetypes. The Swiss psychiatrist and psychoanalyst, founder of analytical psychology, Carl Gustav Jung first mentioned archetypes in his essay called Instinct and the Unconscious in 1919. Archetypes are recurring images, symbols, patterns, motives or ideas that are collectively inherited and unconsciously and universally present in people's psyche. Think that they are grounded in hundreds of years of psychological research and rooted in Greek mythology. In fact, the word archetype comes from the Greek and according to a modern interpretation of Anthony Stevens in Archetype Revisited, an updated natural history of the self, published in 2003, an archetype is a pattern, underlying form or primordial form. Archetypes are very interesting to me because they represent a totally different school of thought from uh, the tabula rasa theory. The tabula rasa theory of a human psychological development describes the human mind as a blank sheet without built-in mental concepts. So all knowledge comes from experience and perception. So this image represents a condensed visualization of the 12 brand archetypes. And just to be fair, all of the following images are a reworked version 
of the creative work of the Australian branding agency Iconic Fox. So how can you use archetypes to make emotive connections with customers? So if you think about it, we have just a transactional relationship with most businesses and companies because we exchange a good or a service for money. Despite this, consumers have developed a strong bond for certain brands and now they are loyal to them. The reason why a brand is able to build strong connections with its audience is because people and the business resonate together in an archetype. So as I mentioned before, if we apply Jung's work to branding, we identify 12 archetypes that can be divided in three macro categories. So now I will just list the 12 archetypes. If you want to take a better look at the infographic that I will show you, you can just stop the video. The first four archetypes belong to the ego types. The innocent, the everyman, or also called the orphan or regular guy or gal. The hero and the caregiver. The second group is the soul types, the explorer, the outlaw or rebel, the lover and the creator. Finally, there is the self types, the jester, the sage, the magician and the ruler. Another way to interpret these 12 archetypes is to divide them into four groups according to their focus. Ego fulfillment, freedom, socialness and order. According to this vision, people are driven by different sources, but they have the same motivating orientation. For example, the caregiver fulfills his ego by helping other people, and this is a social orientation. The hero is also motivated by the desire of self-fulfillment, but he accomplishes brave actions just for the sake of self-worth. According to the Harvard Business School professor Gerald Zaltman, the 95% of consumers purchasing decisions happen in their minds subconscious. And he actually said that observations of consumers often reveal that they don't even look at alternatives to the chosen brand. What consumers actually believe or think as measured by unconscious physical reactions contradicts what they say when asked directly. It means brands that are able to build a strong archetypal personality will overpass the competition thanks to the deep link with their audience. So for homework, do your Capferer's brand identity prism and find out your archetype. Then I dare you to describe your company and its services in the comments below and let's see if I'm able to guess your archetype. Like this video and subscribe to my channel. Every week I come up with a digital marketing lesson. Thank you for watching and see you soon.